Hey guys, Elizabeth here from Plant Based Bride, and I'm back for Last Week in Vegan. So we have a lot to get through this week. I feel like a lot of news related to veganism has been out and about and a lot of really interesting and important news. So let's jump into it. The first story of the day is that England may actually make their banknotes vegan. This comes on the heels of the controversy that came about when it was discovered that the new five pound banknotes contained rendered beef and mutton fat. Vegans, vegetarians, and animal lovers everywhere came out against this usage of animal products within the banknotes. Doug Ma launched a petition which up to this point has 125,000 signatures and what he had to say was this. This is unacceptable to millions of vegans, vegetarians, Hindus, Sikhs, Jains, and others in the UK. We demand that you cease to use animal products in the production of currency that we have to use. So after this controversy and this huge rise in signatures and people who are complaining about this, the Bank of England is now looking to remove the tallow from their five pound banknotes. So they haven't confirmed that they're going to stop using tallow. They said that they were not aware that the contracted material supplier was going to be using tallow and they've said that they are working with that supplier to look for solutions. But as of right now, there's no concrete plan and they're not promising to remove it. They are, however, considering it and that's better than they would have before this outrage. So I think overall, this is a step in the right direction and we'll keep watching this to see if they do actually remove the animal product from the banknotes. The next story of the day comes straight from the Pope. Pope to world leaders, act on climate change now. Pope Francis met with members of the Pontifical Academy of Sciences, including the theoretical physicist Stephen Hawking, at the Vatican on Monday. During his speech he said, work free of political, economic, or ideological interests to develop a cultural model which can face the crisis of climatic change and its social consequences. Now I'm not religious, and so Pope Francis doesn't hold necessarily any more significance to me than pretty much any other man. But he does have cultural significance. And a lot of people are far more likely to listen to what the Pope has to say than pretty much anybody else. So I think it's great that the Pope is making it clear how big of a problem this is and addressing it and asking governments and scientists to really focus on this problem. This should be the number one focus of scientists around the world. If any of you saw Before the Flood, I will link to my review of it here. Leonardo DiCaprio actually spoke with Pope Francis, so I did have an inkling that he was more concerned about this than other popes have seemed to be, but it's great to see it come out again in the news and see that he's continually focusing his work on raising awareness of climate change and trying to get people to actually work on the problem. He also talked about the problem with politicians who deny the existence of climate change. We can all guess who he's referring to in that one. He discussed the problematic nature of the ease with which well-founded scientific opinion about the state of our planet is disregarded. So I think this is awesome news. I think Pope Francis should keep doing what he's doing and encouraging people to make a change to improve the state of our environment. I haven't heard him say anything about people going vegan yet, but hopefully that's just the next step. The next story of the day comes very close to home. Marine Animal Park charged with five counts of cruelty. During a recent visit to Marine Land, SPCA members found a peacock in distress, neglected guinea hens, and malnourished black bears. Unfortunately, they don't have the authority to remove the animals, but they are monitoring the situation. Now, from my opinion, looking at this, it seems like this cruelty isn't any worse than most of the cruelty you see at pretty much any zoo or circus or other place that uses animals simply for entertainment. All of them are living in environments that are not nearly as enriching as they should be. They're all separated from their families or put with a selective group that they can't choose to be around. They're forced to be in distressing situations with large crowds and people making lots of noise very close to them. And you can see that they developed a lot of behavioral problems, neurological disorders, based on this kind of treatment. So while I'm glad that the SPCA is doing something and they have charged Marineland, I really feel like the next step is to show people that the idea of keeping animals contained just for our pleasure is wrong and we shouldn't be doing it. The next story of the day is another Canadian one and this is that a vegan from Nova Scotia bought a 100 year old giant lobster named King Louie for $230 and then released him back to the wild. 
Katie Conklin of Nova Scotia purchased King Louis from the Alma Lobster Shop. After King Louis had brought lots of attention because of his size and estimated age and the interest from people in wanting to kill King Louis and mount him as a prop for their business. Luckily, Katie decided to pay the $230 to purchase King Louis and then promptly returned him to the waters where he was caught in the Bay of Fundy. This is the third story this year about Canadians rescuing lobsters and returning them to the water. This is pretty exciting and kind of an awesome movement that this is happening all over my country. I was talking in the last episode of Last Week in Vegan how I was feeling pretty disappointed in my country. And while there are still things that Canada needs to work on, it's really awesome to see individual Canadians and groups of Canadians doing the right thing and saving these animals. The next story of the day is that the court is dropping charges against Cecil's hunters. You may remember all of the media attention around the killing of Cecil the lion. The charges against the professional hunter who arranged this encounter so that the now infamous dentist Walter Palmer could kill Cecil the lion has had his charges dropped. Theo Bronckhorst, who not only did something horrific by setting up this situation for someone to slaughter an animal, didn't even get the proper hunting permits, making what he did illegal, in addition to ethically wrong. So while some good things have come from this event, like Delta Airlines refusing to transport the remains of a slaughtered black rhino, justice is not being served. This man broke the law and he also did something horrendous and he should be charged for it. Why do we even have laws if there's no penalty for breaking them? The next story of the day is that the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics is greenlighting veganism. The largest organization of healthcare professionals in the United States has officially deemed the vegan diet best for your health and the environment. The Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics has more than 100,000 members and they said it is the position of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics that appropriately planned vegetarian, including vegan, diets are healthful, nutritionally adequate, and may provide health benefits for the prevention and treatment of certain diseases. While the organization is recognizing vegetarian diets in general, they also pointed out that vegan diets are best for reducing the risk of various diseases like type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. They also deemed vegan diets effective at promoting a lower body mass index, they found a vegan diet to be more environmentally friendly than other diets and safe for people of all stages of life, including athletes, pregnant women, children, and older adults. This is amazing news. This has already been said by various organizations, but having an other organization come out and say that vegan diets are safe for people in every single stage of life and that they are beneficial, the best for our health and the best for the environment is such a wonderful thing. This is something that can be put out there for anyone who disagrees with vegan diets or thinks that they're dangerous, like the woman in Italy who is trying to outlaw vegan diets for children. These are the types of things that we need to keep seeing. We need to see these organizations of healthcare professionals putting it out there that vegan diets are safe and have benefits that other types of diets don't. The next story of the day is that scurvy is making a comeback in Australia. Scurvy, which is caused by vitamin C deficiency, has been seen popping up around Australia as consumption of fruits and vegetables goes down. There are cases of scurvy around the world, but usually they happen in places of poverty and people who are malnourished. So it's surprising to see these cases pop up in people who are eating more than enough calories. They're just not eating the right calories. Symptoms of scurvy are bleeding gums, bruising, joint pain, and inefficient wound healing. Great sources of vitamin C are oranges, red peppers, kale, and Brussels sprouts, my personal favorite. The next story of the day is one from my very own backyard in Toronto, and it is that the Toronto Food Bank has served its 50,000th veg meal. The Canadian Food Bank offers meat-free meals to those who need them. It was started by Matt Noble, who is a vegan, who wanted to make sure that people who didn't have the financial security to purchase foods on their own were still able to maintain their ethical views, their ethical choices. He saw that all of these people who needed help to get enough food were forced to compromise their morals by being forced into eating foods that contained animal products. And that caused him to want to go on a mission to create vegan and vegetarian options for those who needed them in Toronto. The Toronto Vegetarian Food Bank was only launched in 2015, but they've already served 50,000 meals. Matt Noble said, we don't think that people's dignity should be sacrificed because they're down on their luck. 
The food bank spends about 60% of their budget on fresh fruits and vegetables and also serves high protein options such as tofu based dishes and plant milks. Matt Noble went on to say, we want to not have people put into a position where they have to choose between feeding themselves and hurting another being. When I first heard about this, I got so excited and immediately turned to my husband and said, we have to go volunteer here. I'm so excited about this. I'm so happy that this is happening in my backyard and we need more of this. We need people who are showing compassion to everyone and this intersectionality of promoting intersectionality and showing that you can help more than one group at a time. Matt Noble is showing that you can help humans who are down on their luck, humans who need your help, who aren't able to feed themselves while also helping animals. And I just think that's a beautiful thing. There are so many interesting stories this week that I wanted to cover, but I also didn't want this video to go on forever and ever. So if you check out the links below, you'll see links to all of the stories I talked about, as well as links to a couple other stories I think you might find interesting. As always, let me know in the comments below your opinions on these stories. I really want to have a conversation with you about these. That's the best part of making these videos, is hearing other people's opinions and having discussions. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. I put up a Last Week in Vegan video every single Monday and other videos every Saturday. Check out my blog if you haven't. It's plantbasedbride.com with new blog posts every Wednesday. Follow me on social media so that we can be friends. And don't forget, if you like what I do, to please support me on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. You get extra fun benefits, you get to be part of the family, and it helps me so much in being able to spend more time creating awesome free content for you. Until next time, bye guys.